When you hear the words wine country, you may think of places like Italy, Spain, France, California, New Zealand, or South Africa. But what about Mexico? That's right, this country is making a name for itself as a world-class wine producer. And Valle de Guadalupe in Baja, California, just an hour and a half south of San Diego, is where most Mexican wine is made. Commonly called the Napa of Mexico, Valle de Guadalupe is home to over 100 different vineyards and has some absolutely incredible dining experiences. Travel with us this week as we show you some of the best wine and food Valle de Guadalupe has to offer. La Cocina Doña Estela is by far the most popular, well-known restaurant in all of Valle de Guadalupe. It was voted the best breakfast in all of the world in 2015, and it really just put it on the map. This place gets packed on the weekends. You can see anywhere from three to four hours wait for breakfast. So the very first place we are coming to during our time in Valle de Guadalupe is Doña Estela's. <laughs> and it's only a like five to seven minute walk from our RV park, so it's a perfect way to start our time. There's no one here right now. I really have a dog's nose in my crotch. Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> hi, baby. What's up, puppy? Okay, more people are coming though, so we do yeah, need to get, get a seat. <laughs> We're starting off with Cafe de Olla, which is a Mexican coffee, and they put lots of canela, which is uh, cinnamon in it. They also put the piloncillo, which is the like natural raw cane sugar, the brown color in a cone you can find in grocery stores sometimes. It's absolutely delicious. We haven't had this since Mexico City. So long. I'm excited. I'm gonna drink it before it gets cold. Oh, it won't get cold. I just annihilated my mouth. <laughs> we ended up getting their three specialties. Here they're known for their borrego, which is lamb. We ended up getting a gordita, which is like a breakfast specialty stuffed with lamb. We also got their hot cakes made from corn, and we got machaca <laughs> con huevo, which is like a ground meat that they kind of like finely dice and they put it with scrambled eggs. It's normally served in the morning. I'm so excited, it's so cozy and warm in here. If you're right next to the kitchen, you can see them cooking. It's pretty cool. I hop eat your heart out. <laughs> wow, they're so fluffy and soft. <laughs> the elote or the corn in it makes it like a really sweet flavor to it naturally. Mm -hmm. So good. Most people wouldn't think of like lamb or heavy meat for breakfast, but here in Mexico that's super common. <laughs> Oh my god. Is it good? Oh yeah. That's the winner. That might be the best gordita we've ever had. We've had a lot of gorditas. What's your favorite? That's hard. <laughs> as far as like the way I usually eat breakfast, which is pork, 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 and more pork, the gordita is probably bam, like number one, pancakes, mashaka. Mm. Some pets, puppy. <laughs> oh, give me some pets, please. Okay. We need pets over here. Stat. Oh, give you some pets. pets. Oh, pets. Yeah. We're definitely back in Mexico. There's dogs everywhere. Most of them are so sweet. Noisy, but sweet. Noisy, but sweet, yeah. We're doing a wine tasting at Vinos Pijuan, which is a Spanish family owned vineyard here in Valle de Guadalupe. Very highly reviewed, and the grounds are breathtaking. This place is nice. Yeah. That's very beautiful. The wine tastings here start for three for around $15, or it goes up to $22.50 for five, which includes a digestivo. So we ended up doing the five, and we're splitting it because our plan is to go to a few vineyards today, so we don't want to get a little too tipsy. <laughs> but so far, the first one is delicious. Whoa. Good? Very acidic. Really? Super citrusy. Mm. It's quite yummy. They kept this one partially filtered because they wanted to keep a lot of the like aromatics of it and if you filter the white wines too much it loses a lot of that so you can kind of see it has like cloudiness to it very nice green apple peel maybe some sort of a, a citrus like a limey hint well, tons of minerality i don't think your acidity ah. level was quite right at least i think it's not as sharp as what you described but it's definitely there look where we're at we're just chilling on this patio dude. it's so nice I know, you want a wine tasting too. <laughs> yes, you do. You thirsty, perrito. If you come down a little off the tasting room, there's like this little palapa. There's a swing, you're next to the cactus overlooking these views. Hello. Winner, winner for the wine tasting here is the Lenora. It was the first wine that they ever made. It's what started this vineyard. It is incredible. We will definitely be buying a bottle of this. We will have a blog post for all of our recommendations for the places that we eat, all of our favorite vineyards that we visit. Some of them may not show up in this vlog. So if you're interested and you're planning your own trip to Valle de Guadalupe, definitely check that out. We'll have a link down below. Finish up our tasting, they give you a digestivo, 
This one is the red vermouth. They use a little bit of the red wine, but they also use herbs from the garden. So something that the owner did here is replanted a lot of the native plants for Baja California, and they're using those as they're making their vermouth, which I think is amazing. And it's so aromatic. She said there's like sage in here, clove, cinnamon, and a bunch of other herbs. I just can't remember them right now, but it is so good. And all from the property here. All from the property. That's How cool dope. is that? We loaded up. I'm ready for the next vineyard though. <laughs> next up is Ilo Negro, which means the black thread. This is a newer vineyard here, and we weren't gonna vlog it at first, but after having our first class sip of wine, I was like, oh yeah, we should get the camera out. This is really good. Fantastic wines. This is their only white that they produce at the vineyard here, and it is delicious. I'm not a white wine fan. It's like so refreshing. It just has a subtle hint of sweetness to it and lots of fruity notes. Fantastic. The building itself is so cool. It's like very modern. Everything is all glass walls and all the rocks around here have also changed a lot. They look a lot like Joshua Tree, so it's just a really unique landscape. Ilo Negro won the most awards last year when they did the competition. They actually had 48 countries come here and they did this like big wine tasting competition. It was supposed to put Mexico on the map. Wine arrived in Baja California in the 1500s along with Spanish colonization, but it took roughly 200 years before the first grape vines were cultivated in this valley. Fast forward to the 1970s, nearly 270 years later, and Valle de Guadalupe finally begins to attract international attention as vinicolas in the area begin to harvest awards. Over the last 10 years, the wine region has exploded and is now home to more than 120 wineries and growing. Today, Valle produces roughly 80% of all Mexican wines. Most vinicolas in the valley produce conventional wines that can easily compete with any other well-known region in the world. But what we think really makes Valle stand out is its love for natural winemaking. Valle's natural wines are very experimental with a focus on minimal intervention, meaning they do as little as possible during the winemaking process to allow the elemental flavor of the tierra, the land, to shine through. Using organically grown grapes, no additives like sulfites or clarifiers, little to no filtration, and natural fermentation with wild yeast from the vines themselves. The art of natural winemaking produces only 1% of all wines in the world. A vinicola that takes natural winemaking to the next level is La Finca Querodilla, the only biodynamic winery in all of Valle. Biodynamic winemaking takes an ethical, ecological, and spiritual approach to how the wine is cultivated and harvested while restoring soil diversity. Aside from having incredible wines and one of the best views in the valley, they also have a fully operational farm with organic produce and livestock, something we found most restaurants in Valle de Guadalupe are also proud to have. Yeah, we came to La Finca El Tozado for dinner. I'm enjoying a delicious carajillo. We've already received and devoured our agua chile, which is some of the best agua chile I've had in the entire country. We ordered five dishes. I didn't expect the agua chile to be as large as it was when it hit the table, and now I'm nervous that we ordered too much. But you know what? It's not the first time. I am loving this weather right now. We are visiting Valle de Guadalupe in the beginning of February, so it's still very much winter everywhere else. And in the daytime, it is just perfect. The nights get really, really cold, so be prepared for that, but it is glorious right now. And we're at Las Nubes, which was highly, highly recommended to us by so many different people. And the views here are incredible. We're doing a degustacion, a tasting for their classic wines, which is running us about 15 US dollars, I think. This is Sauvignon and Chardonnay blend. Okay. You said it has lots of notes of kiwi, lychee, crispiness, very fresh, pairs super well with seafood. I think they're doing a lot of unoaked whites around here because you get to actually taste more of the grape itself and more of the earth that it comes from and i tell you what man i haven't had i haven't had a bad wine yet even the the experimental like biodynamic stuff we had yesterday some of that was funky because of the wild yeast fermentation that they were using but at the same time still very delicious so i'm impressed by Bio de Guadalupe. Ooh, i like this one yeah. This is a buyer. A lot of these wines you can only find in the valley. And so it's so interesting to just taste all the differences from winery to winery. Everything's so experimental here. It's it's really wonderful to see this like region up and coming. I feel like in 20 years it's gonna be a completely different place, even more than it's changed in the last five, which is crazy. 
This is a winner. This is a winner. Wow. You got to come to Las Nubes for the views and their wines were fantastic. Also a really good price point. A lot of the other ones have kind of been higher end. So if you do want to go home with some bottles, you're going to be spending some money, which there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're looking for some more economic options, I think Las Nubes has it of all ranges. Once or twice a year, all of the people that live in the surrounding area of Valle de Guadalupe, they come here and they take their horses and they go into the campo and they have like a huge lunch, a huge feast together. There's lots of music. They're playing banda right now. And then they just come back later in the evening. It's just like one big fiesta for them. We get asked a lot, why RV Mexico? Is it worth the risk? Is it safe? All of the questions that often come up. The reason we RV Mexico is because you get to experience things like this. It is a completely different culture. They have different customs, practices, beliefs amazing food. It's just a different way of living and we appreciate that. We love the opportunity to get to learn and explore a new place like this. We know there's several wine country spots that we could visit in the United States, but that's not why to go to Lupe. That's not why we're here. We're here to experience Mexico. We came to Chade which is a newer spot. It's highly, highly reviewed and it's closer to the town of Valle de Guadalupe, which to give you guys kind of like a base of how Valle de Guadalupe works, there is a road that will take you all the way around pretty much in a loop. There are roads that connect between the two main highways, but they're dirt roads and the conditions of those vary dramatically from spot to spot. Right now, since we've had a lot of rain, a few of them have been completely impassable, so we've had to go all the way around, which takes quite a long time. So if you are coming here, I highly recommend having a car that is high clearance because some of these roads are crazy. We're just getting an appetizer here because we are gonna be going to a lovely dinner later this evening. But I can definitely recommend this spot. The red wines in particular are super, super tasty. We came to Anamilon for dinner tonight, which is the sister restaurant to Las Finca Altosana that we went to last night. They're literally right next door to each other. They have a sea urchin risotto. We have to get that. I've never heard anything like that. I think I'm gonna get the raviolis de langosta. Lobster raviolis with butternut squash cream. I'm so excited. <laughs> Good. Yeah. There's so many different flavors in it. It has like lots of acidity from like lime, but they made a peanut sauce with it. And there's pickled onion. There's some crushed up seaweed with peppers, I believe. It's fantastic. Mint, spinach. The hopped up hot chocolate. It's got bourbon and, and corn liqueur, vanilla, and milk. Mm. And it is banging. It's gonna go down so fast. <laughs> it's our last day in Valle de Guadalupe, and unfortunately, it is a very windy day, quite chilly, but we are still making the most of it. We came to Troika food truck, which is right next to Vina Cava. It's one of the few vineyards here in Valle de Guadalupe that is doing traditional sparkling wine in the Cava style, which is from Spain. This has been a highly recommended restaurant for us to stop at. It's perfect for like lunch. They do uh, locally sourced small plates, all from their organic farm. Very excited. We ordered three different dishes today, a mushroom rice with a little bit of fried sweet bread. We also got a crepe made with oxtail and bone marrow, roasted cabbage with a cauliflower puree, fresh kale, a little bit of apple, and then I put this like bacon glaze on top. And we also got a pork belly skewer with tzatziki. The views out here are gorgeous. You're overlooking the mountain. It's a shame it's kind of crazy weather today. The culinary scene in Valle de Guadalupe is incredible. If you are a foodie, you are in for a treat. Just be prepared. It is a more expensive place to visit definitely not on the cheaper side. There are cheap options like Doña Estela's, but most of the places are going to be similar to US prices. It's worth it though. Vina Cava's vibe is amazing. I love that a lot of the vineyards here, the vinicolas, are like big and grand. It feels like this massive experience, but this one is really quaint and intimate. They reused and repurposed old boats for the roofs, which I think is so, so cool when you're like in a cave. It's a very small operation, but I highly recommend it. I think it could easily get overlooked by some of the bigger, shinier vineyards that are nearby. Come for the food, stay for the wine. <laughs> A few tips if you're visiting Valle de Guadalupe. It gets extremely hot in the summertime. It also gets very cold in the wintertime. So you wanna come in spring or fall, that's gonna be the best, more favorable weather, but you will be met with crowds. So just prepare accordingly. Definitely make reservations for any wine tastings or restaurants that you wanna visit. Things also close very early, around seven, maximum 8 p.m. Plan to start your day early here. Search wine tasting starts around 10 to 11. Plan your whole day around tastings and have an early dinner and then just kind of call it a night. Our last meal in Valle de Guadalupe. Oh, no, this is crazy. Came to Tre Gallin, which means three hens in Italian. They are known for their pasta dishes here. They make all of their pasta in-house and it's supposed to be spectacular. It's also really, really close to our RV park. Look at that cute little meatball nest. 
Oh. They're making their limoncello in-house here. Oh, it's so bouncy. I've never had anything like that before. No? I guess I've never had panna cotta before. I love panna cotta. And this is, this is banging. And you toss a limoncello on top and it just cleans the palate. Mm, that's banging. When it comes to accommodations, there are so many unique, beautiful, elegant, and budget hotel options to stay at in Valle de Guadalupe. Our blog post will cover some of our recommended spots to stay if you are coming not in an RV. Obviously, since we are traveling all throughout Mexico in our Class C RV Dita, we stayed at an RV park called El Valle. It is right in the heart of Valle de Guadalupe. It was like a 10 to 20 minute drive to most of the vineyards and restaurants we wanted to visit. So it was a super great location. It has 15 amp electricity. There is a dump and water fill up here. They also have bathrooms and showers for you. And if you're looking for more budget accommodation options, if some of the hotels are on the pricier side, they do offer like Airbnb style rentals here too. They have these really cute little wine barrels as well as a wine bottle that they've turned into like a full suite. It has its own private bathroom and shower. It was super cool in there. Valle de Guadalupe was absolutely amazing. We are so excited to return in the future. We are venturing on and we are so excited to take you with us. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you next time. God, you look like a pro swirling I am that a pro wine. Professional alcoholic, baby. <laughs> mm. We came to Shade. I hope I'm saying that right. Shade, Shade. Get a little Shade up in there. Takes over your taste buds and then it slides down clean. That's mm. what she said. You, that's what she said me as I'm trying to describe some wine. <laughs> Fun fact here in Mexico, they say for the cats that's instead of. How, how did he do it? Anyways, they don't make the same cat noises that we do in the United States. <laughs> Excuse me. It was it. I zoomed in as you. Oh.